Yeah, I'm yeah. trying it now. I'm still. Well, I just I just resent another one though. Oh, got it, got it. Okay, great. Let me. Apologies, everyone, for the technical difficulties here, but we should be up and running momentarily. So while, while we're waiting in, on Jesse to check the minutes, so the chat box, as I said earlier, we're using that for our attendance, but also the chat box is not to be used for side conversations. So if you do have a question, please raise your hand using the raise hand function, or if you have an issue, you can also request to speak in the chat box, but let's try to keep the side conversations in the chat box to a minimum. This isn't working, so I'm just going to try and take the notes and rig. Hold on. Jesse, you could just uh, type them as I am, that's paragraphs, what... and then we'll insert them into the minute form. That's what I'll do. Let's just get started. I'll, I have to do that later, so let's just okay. Get and, and I'll refer to the numbers so that you know. Thank you. But, um, oh, okay. Herman, Herman just signed in, so I'm just admitting him now. So here, we're all here. OK, thanks. So I'm going to start. Good evening, everybody. Hopefully, we can move this along for you relatively quickly. Um, we try to do that, given that the format is so unusual, or I guess we're getting used to it. So it's not. It's less, less unusual for us. Um, we're going to uh, start the, the meeting with two items that are not applications, and then we're going to move to the applications, and there are six of those. Um, the first item is voting uh, or approval of previous month's minutes. Do I have a resolution or any amendments um, for the minutes that I send out? So moved. And this is for my committee members. That, was that you, Herman? Yes. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that was all five of us. Um, we're moving now on to a discussion, a continued discussion of the district needs statement. We started this discussion last month and um, we'll finalize it next month, um, but essentially it, it summarizes the community, our community needs um, in a document uh, that we give to the city. Um, present here to assist us with that tonight is our assistant district manager, um, Jim. Hi, everyone. So, Hi, Jim. I can see. <laughs> um, and I sent out for everybody what I sent out last month, which was a slightly amended uh, need statement for our section. Um, it was amended by the office, and then I updated it by just including some language um, that references what we're going through now and how we're unable to perceive the complete consequences of what we're going through now. Um, and that is because I was trying to do it from the perspective of the fiscal year that it's addressing, the need statement is addressing fiscal year 2021. Right. Um, Jim, is there, I know I sent it to the office. Were there, there any suggestions or comments you had with respect to it? I sent it to the committee members as well. And yeah. then we can pull it up if we need to. Yeah, the, um, so I think what, what Alex is describing is kind of um, a, <laughs> that every single committee has has had to grapple with um your, your committee is lucky in certain ways because a lot of the, the needs are kind of evergreen um, and mostly we can kind of update statistics but it's it's really a lot of the same needs but we've also asked year to year it's often a lot of the same needs but we've also asked every committee to try to tailor at least a paragraph or two um to something related to um conditions that have arisen because of COVID-19 and like Alex said, um, you know, she put together a great 
um, like draft paragraph of what that could look like. I don't really have any particular suggestions. I think your the, the challenge you just described is the challenge everyone's facing. Is you're you're trying to kind of thread, thread the needle between um, assessing things you've seen on the ground that are that are happening now, but projecting out fiscal year twenty one into a real unknown. Right? We don't know what, um, the uh, licensed business landscape will look like then. Um, I think one of the only things we mentioned is that it, um, then this is a, this is a small thing, but it, it might make more sense to just talk about the um, total number of licensed businesses versus the um, concentration of licensed businesses because mm -hmm. um, I guess when we, we start thinking about concentration, um, it might not be as stark how um, impacted our district is compared to other ones because there may be some districts that have a a higher uh, concentration of licenses per resident, but clearly we just have an overwhelming volume of gross uh, licenses. So that was something we talked about, but that might be an important change. Um, but no, I don't know. I think I think what you put forward um, makes a lot of sense. Are you able to share that with the committee? Yeah, I was just gonna, I have it sure, ready to I share for the screen. Yeah, hold on one second. I was just waiting to give you a chance to speak. I'm gonna share it on the screen for everyone. I think what's difficult is even in July 2021, we might not be seeing the full effects of what's happening now. And that yeah. itself is difficult. So something that we um, just talked about um, while drafting the land use, um, and this hasn't been finalized yet, so this is just um, mm -hmm. an idea, is to say something like, um, like we will be closely watching um, these conditions over the next fiscal year um, or closely monitoring these developments over the next fiscal year. So you can kind of state your your concerns, but we're not able at this time, right, to like assert definitively that this is this is the impact that will happen. But you just, you know, you can just have a line that says, this is what we're going to be watching. And then it almost serves as a reminder for next year's um, district needs statement. Mm -hmm. Check back in on those metrics or markers or whatever issues you had to say, okay, do we need to ask for a more specific intervention now that we've um, had a year to, di to digest the changes to the landscape of, of you know, liquor license um, and, and well, all sorts of licensed businesses. Um, that's kind of a safe way, I think, to, mm -hmm. to, to phrase it because there's so much unknown. But, but again, like I said, I, I think what you came up with, um, once you make that change to the, to the num gross number of licenses versus concentrations is, is quite strong. So that might be, maybe, well, maybe the committee should just look at that right now. Um, and you know, I mean, well, we, can, we can discuss if there needs to be changes, but I think the, on the office end, we felt pretty good with, with that. Jim, I do have a question, and that is there are some, a couple of suggestions further down or recommendations um, that have been there for, like, that we have suggested over time, because it's kind of a static committee in terms of what the, yeah. the needs are for the city. Yep. Um, they're right here. They're the two bullet points, strict adherence and use of existing tools. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder about the existence the continued existence and relevance of six and sixty legislation and its use. Yeah. Like it was enacted in 2010. It wasn't it wasn't used really, yeah. maybe sparingly. Um, we had a call for using it. Uh, I don't know whether or not it should should we continue to request something like that or should we be maybe um, just just talk about uh, using tools to address quality of life complaints and also have perhaps having agencies work more efficiently together um, to address yeah. them in a more efficient way. I think so that's a, it's a good point. Something that, that I've been recommending and this has kind of been a learning process for me over the last two uh, or mm -hmm. three statements is um, to try to simplify things by reframing them around the, the need without getting into too much of the specifics of policy. So in this case, if it feels like um, those two, those, those two bullet points were pretty um, 
narrowly calling for enforcement of particular legislation. And if it's feeling irrelevant at this point, um, you may want to remove it and, and read that based around like, like that, the, that the need mm -hmm. is some sort of interagency or legislative legislative action that effectively um, addresses violation of stipulations or um, hyper saturation of licenses in a certain area. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you can fill it down to what the underlying mm -hmm. need is and get rid of the superfluous um, discussion about particular legislation. And and what you could also do, um, you know, that we've recommended to other committees, if, if it feels like something's not working, you may want to just like identify the need and then at a later date, maybe you want to think about like a separate resolution that calls for something specific to change for an existing law that's not working. You know, maybe the district needs statement isn't the place for that. Um, so I think that's a good idea. If you can distill those bullet points down to just, just the need rather than the, um, the like mechanism through which that need gets addressed. Because you, you could always deal with that at a later date through a, a resolution. Does everybody agree that we maybe should make those needs more general than they are right now, although essentially saying the same thing? Um, many members, yeah. does anybody want to be heard with respect to that? No, I agree. We've been, you know, I think we've had these in for, I don't know how many of the past years and, and it's fine. I just, like you said about the six and 60, I don't know that that's really ever been used very much and it's maybe pointless to kind of, Add it in there if it's not going to be, you know, effective. Mm -hmm. And I do Anybody agree. Else? I, I do agree as well that I think we should, you know, maybe just focus on actual enforcement between you know the different agencies that are involved. I know that's mentioned elsewhere in here, but I think that seems to be our our main issue. Um, any, is there anybody else, Clint? Um, I don't think I see that anyone has their hands up. Um, one thing that just to be just uh, procedural sure. that um, I forgot to do in some other committee is um, if, because we're doing this over the course of several months, which is a little bit unusual in the past, um, if, it, if there is something proposed, like revise that language, um, be sure to just note it in the minutes because we forgot to note it in minutes for some other committees. And then of course, when a month went by, I forgot to make the changes. So I'm just, just flagging that to, to make a note in the minutes so no one forgets. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Jim. Um, all right, so I'll, I will, um, I'll try myself to add in language uh, about closely watching the conditions. Jim, are, are we putting that at the beginning of the need statement where we put like the general paragraph about the yeah um, the district? You know, it's up to you really. That has been, um, let's see, I've seen almost every committees at this point. I think everyone is almost either either started with that or had it be kind of like the second paragraph or maybe they, they started with the general intro and then the second paragraph they said, and like here are some specific kind of emergency issues that have come up um, over the last three unprecedented months. So I, I, maybe having it come after that, that intro initial paragraph makes the most sense, but um, mm -hmm. that's been what other committees have been doing. All right, uh, so I'll do that and I'll reframe the needs and I'll, uh, the recommendations and I'll send it back out to everybody, okay, before, August meeting, which is when we have to vote on it. Okay. Yeah. What, one more thing, um, just procedurally, to, to sure. unusual from the past is I think we'll, we'll, you'll try to finalize it in August, um, but but technically that, that'll be when the committee stops working on it. But we're going to actually vote on the district needs statement as a full board um, at on the same time as the budget mm -hmm. in October, which is unusual. So just you can have in the back of your head if anything comes up in those inter, you know, in, in September or October, um, because things are changing so rapidly, you do have that little, um, you know, safety valve there to, to, to add something in if something just un, you know, out of the blue comes up that you, that you missed. Okay, 
Thank you. I think that's it, Jim. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to um, the applications now, starting with number three. Which, which is yes which is 95 avenue a aka 445 east 6th street all right i'm going to summarize the application and history and i'm going to give you an opportunity to talk robbie okay sounds good uh, so this is a, an alteration application changing the method of operation of um a two-story venue separated into two separate businesses um, and combining them into uh, one business, presumably to mirror the existing small business at 445 East 6th Street. Um, but I think the applicant will speak to this more. Uh, we heard this application originally in 2010 um, and approved it as Cien Fuegos um, and last heard it in November of 2018 when we approved an alteration to change the second floor from a Cuban restaurant to a vegan Texas barbecue restaurant and whiskey bar uh, with the following stipulations, operate a full service vegan uh, Polynesian restaurant on the ground floor, which is what existed there at the time, and a vegan, vegan Texas barbecue restaurant on the second floor, um, serving food to within one hour closing on both floors, operating the storefront at 445 East 6th Street as a bitters bar have hours of 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. all days, have a sidewalk cafe, um, and this is a little bit incorrect because it says with hours of 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. all days. Um, obviously, uh, its hours were 5 p.m. and we said open at 11 a.m., but those were the existing sidewalk cafe hours when we heard this alteration. Close the facade at 10 p.m., uh, play recorded background music, not apply for an alteration without first coming before us, not host pub crawls or party buses, not have unlimited drink specials, not have happy hours, not have wait lines outside, and also have someone um, responsible for overseeing crowds and noise outside. Uh, the, this application says the CFO on the first floor is 50 people, on the second floor is 70. Uh, there's 38 tables and 108 seats inside. They're not broken down. 10 tables and 20 seats outside with seven tables and 14 seats on East 6th Street, um, according to the diagram that was submitted. Three bars of unspecified size with a total of 22 seats. Hours are 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. all days. Kitchen opened within one hour of closing. Um, it said vegan Spanish tapas. It didn't, uh, the applicant didn't provide a menu. There was no answer about the facade, no TVs, recorded background music, no promoted events, scheduled performances or covers. No security, existing soundproofing, no pub crawls or party buses, no happy hours, no wait lines, staff outside. Um, the original license was issued April 23rd of 2010, um, and there is uh, some history in 2012, some uh, SLA report history in 2012 with a conditional no contest, contest uh, plea December 5th of 2012 for pre-mixing an unauthorized trait name um, on July 2nd of 2012. Okay, uh, Ravi, this is your opportunity to uh, clarify anything um, or make a presentation. Sorry, I, say that again? This is your opportunity to clarify anything that I summarized. I summarized what documents yeah. I had. Um, or your opportunity to make a presentation about your application. Um, I mean, basically, we're just, we're just preparing for what I expect to be a really um, terrible economy for who knows how long. Right now we operate the three businesses in one. In order to do so, it requires two chefs, three managers, two beverage directors, a bar manager. Like it, the payroll is, it's, it's astronomical, it's very high. And I just don't think that in the future for God knows how long um, it's gonna be possible to sustain that. So my team and I sat down and decided we just want to operate one business in all of this because then we don't need all that staff in order to make that operate. So we decided to go with the Moya Mart. So we'll be adding a full dinner menu of Spanish tapas, uh, which we're still working on. And um, yeah, basically that's it. 
it's not going to operate much differently than it does now. It's just going to be, it also allows a lot more space for distance between people. The upstairs, we actually want to break it into separate rooms, divided by whether it's curtains or walls, so that if you have a group of four here, you can, they can everybody can have private rooms or separate rooms and uh, social distance in a very, very safe manner. So uh, two clarifications before I see if there's anybody who wants to speak to this in the, the audience, the virtual audience, or ask questions. Um, is uh, 445 East 6th Street still going to be a separate little, uh, first, I've never been in it, so I don't know if it's attached, because I could not yes, tell from the attached. plan. So is it just going to operate as one continuous space, but there's going to be like still a separate bar and a separate entrance at that location? Yes, correct. They're all they're all connected. There's one kitchen in the middle that services all three spaces. It's all connected. So there's a bar on each floor and a bar at 445 East Sixth Street. Those are the three bars. Yes. And the entrance is still going to be on Avenue A, and then you can either go directly into the ground floor or up to the second floor. Yeah, there'll be one entrance on Avenue A that will go into what is now the Tiki Bar, or you can go upstairs through the same entrance. You can't, the only way to get into the small space would be through the kitchen. So that room will still operate with its own entrance. We're gonna start teaching classes and cocktail classes and things out of that room. It'll, be, it'll only be used on occasion for special events, things like that. It won't operate the way it does now as a bar that's open seven days a week. Okay, all right. Uh, Clint, are there any uh, people who wanna speak to this or ask any questions? No one signed up in the chat. I don't see anyone with their hands raised. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this item? I am still getting, getting a sense of how the two places, being two separate places is still going to, he's trying to explain to me, but I can't visualize what it looked like. There, there are two buildings, they're separate addresses, but they are connected. There's a, there's, there's a kitchen at 95 Avenue A with exits into 445 East 6th Street, as well as into the bar at 95 Avenue A. There's also a staircase that goes from 95 Avenue A into 445 East 6th Street. So it, it, it's two buildings, they're owned by the same person. He's connected them completely. So it, although they're two addresses, Inside the space, it's like just one space with three rooms. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, can you also just speak to what the facade is like on the ground floor and on the, the facade? So the, the facade is not going to change. Thick? Does it's it not, open? I can't remember what it's like. It and on no, the there's floor. no opening windows. We, we, had, we went to the Landmarks Commission and did exactly what they approved us, which was no open windows. So there's nothing. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other committee members? Or Herman, do you have any additional questions? No. Okay. I'm good. Um, okay. Um, do you want, should we go to the making of a resolution then? Sure. All right. Uh, working from the, the draft that, um, Clint provided us. Uh, I'll, we should make a resolution uh, to deny unless resolution, which would um, start out with a whereas clause stating what the application is. Um, and um, a whereas clause uh, detailing the elements of the application, uh, the history of the location or approval or denial history, um, when the license was first issued, which was April 23rd of 2010. Um, here, uh, I think we would also say that given that this has been a longstanding business that hasn't had um, complaints or any recent um, summons or SLA history. I don't think it ha has the summons history. Well, I don't know. I can only say that has no recent complaints. 
or uh, SLA history, um, that we would approve the alteration or deny it unless they would agree to the following stipulations. And then I would propose almost the same stipulations as existed before. So um, now it would be operate as a full service uh, vegan Spanish uh, tapas restaurant. with a kitchen open and serving food to within one hour of closing. On both floor, um, and I would put the, uh, I'm gonna have to put this as a separate, Ellen, unless you can fit it in um, at the bottom, I may have already done it, which is that it will operate as a full service restaurant on both floors because our form doesn't really permit it to um, be typed into the top where we kind of identify if it's operating as a restaurant. Yeah, it's um, bottom number 18. I will operate a full service restaurant on both floors. Uh, is it fair to say, uh, Robbie, the storefront at 445 East 6th Street, it's still going to be a, a, a bar or you're saying it's just going to be used for, We're gonna is be it going to be used contiguous with everything else or it's going to be used just uh, for classes and other it'll be used as an event space and for teaching classes um, maybe on the weekends if we have the draw we'll open it up but I I just don't expect that but I don't want to but it's sorry but it's still operating as a bitters bar in essence it's Correct. not going to be a place where you go because it's just a narrow bar a yeah, place where you go and you have a, like a dining experience you might have going into the other floors. All three rooms will be essentially operated as the same business. Okay. But with that little back room, we want to use for private events, for teaching classes, and maybe if we get run over on the weekends, if we're busy enough, we'll use it on them for those nights but we will still keep the liquor license on that bar. Okay, then then I'll just put both floors um, at both addresses as a full service restaurant and bitters bar, okay? Yes. Um, that the hours uh, will be 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. all days. Uh, that the sidewalk cafe hours will be 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. all days. Can we can we make that 11 on the weekends? Do you want us to change the hours then to 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. Mondays through Fridays and 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. Saturdays and Sundays? Yeah, no, I'm specifically referring to the outdoor cafe. You're going to operate the outdoor cafe separate from the rest of the restaurant? No, it'll be part of it, but you said 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Yeah, we... that, that's what I was saying. Should I then change the indoor hours of operation? We had this discussion when we talked about the Polynesian. Yeah, place. trying to do the brunch thing. Listen, well, I, I'm going to try to do brunch again. If it works, great. I, it, it just has never worked for me in the past. So um, you might as well put the hours there for earlier. For 11. So the hours of operation will put 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. These are the hours of operation inside. 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. Monday through Friday. Correct. 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. Saturday and Sunday. Correct. The is 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday and Sunday for the Sunday Cafe. So what I'm asking is, is on Fridays and Saturdays, can we keep the outside open until 11 p.m. instead of 10 p.m.? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Does that make sense? Um, there are no I don't know. I'm good. This is, let me go through the rest of, let me go through the rest of the resolution, then we'll go back to that, because this is a little bit, um, this is something we have to consider, because we have been trending in earlier hours outside. Okay. Um, just just okay? so you know, so, there are no I just have to have a discussion up. about, I'm sorry, what did you say? There are no tenants above us. Zero tenants. I'm the only tenant in the entire building. So as far as noise emanating upwards from the outdoor cafe, yes, it could go across the street, but upwards, 
we're the only tenant in the building, if that makes a difference. I don't know that it does necessarily on that corner of Avenue A, but I, I mean, that's something we'll discuss. Okay. Of uh, the committee members. So, uh, it's a closed facade with no open doors or windows, uh, recorded background music, no promoted events, scheduled performances or events with cover fees, um, no pub crawls or party buses, no happy hours, no wait line staff outside. Um, and then we'll go to the discussion of um, whether or not we should keep the hours of operation for the sidewalk cafe, the closing hours the same or extend them in any way. And what the applicant is asking for is to extend them to 11 Saturdays, Fridays and Saturdays. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Um, does anybody want to be heard with respect to that from the committee? Has the guidance changed uh, for sidewalk cafes? The guidelines for sidewalk cafes are later. Um, we just have uh, been trending toward asking that they close at 10 in certain areas. Um, those areas include like Avenue A where we've had uh, significant like crowds at night um, and the, it's not necessarily the disturbance to upstairs neighbors although that's certainly one factor but it's the uh, more people on the sidewalk and the general noise outside I'll, uh, that I'll has had us trending to earlier hours. How, how big was that sidewalk cafe? Did you was that in the history? Um, hold on a second, and I'm just going to minimize my screen and see if I can bring it up, bring up the minutes. Uh, what he wrote was 10 tables and 20 seats, with seven tables and 14 seats on um, Sixth Street. On East Sixth Street, yeah, and then I'm just going to look and see what the what we approved. I believe so that. Robbie, yeah. are they, they're seven two tops and they're right along the facade? Yeah, they're right along the building on 6th Street and then there's six seats on Avenue A and 14 on 6th. Um, there it is. For me on the sidewalk cafe, uh, that extra hour doesn't doesn't ride with me. Okay, um, I think we should stay consistent um, because I'm sure other people is going to come and ask for that extra hour, which we have diligently withhold all the time that we have been issuing sidewalk cafe recommendations. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's uh, what he said, which is uh, 10 tables, 20 seats. But I don't think we broke it down. I know that we did discuss how they would be set up and the tables on East 6th Street. Um, so it seems consistent with what the discussion was. Okay. Anybody else um, want to be heard with respect to this? So it's just Jesse, I think. Did we hear from you? No, I was just saying, like, does this warrant a special, yeah, I agree, it's it's nice to be consistent with the 10, but do these times warrant a exception to our consistency in going later? And I mean, and I, I mean that as a legitimate question for us to consider. I don't, I don't know. That's why we should discuss it. So, um, I mean, we already see what's happening with people outside. Uh, and these these times are accommodating the businesses to an extent, right? The sidewalk cafe, how it exists is not really going to um, necessarily in, impact businesses because as long as there's an accommodation, there's going to be something more than the cafe. So we could think of it that way or we could think of it as it's like a small accommodation that maybe we should make. But then we have to consider what Herman said, which is, then we do we make it for everybody and what's going to happen then can i comment on that can we do that can't we do it let, by, me, let us finish our discussion first go ahead can't and i get this slippery slope argument but could i mean don't we always do case by case basis for most of these things and or or does this open in your experience does this open the floodgates or are we saying like case by case on this well, case he has an he has experience with no complaints 
it's on an avenue that you know that isn't own issues no one above that's why we made this exception i don't i don't know because dca doesn't really hear case by case they just yeah. hear you know what we approve and what we don't approve it, it's not like For evaluating us, it, an SOA application even though we're doing it that way um, go ahead robbie um yeah you guys are you guys are always pretty clear about you know someone trying to get a liquor license or trying to get a tell them to start with beer and wine and come back after, you know in a year or two if they have no complaints then you upgrade them. I've been I've been in this space for ten years with almost no complaint history. I feel like it might warrant an exception to the rule because it's been ten years with no complaints. Mind you, I have eight other businesses in the neighborhood with zero complaints as well. And I, you guys do what you like, but I feel like it might it should warrant an exception. Not and forget the whole COVID thing. I feel like just the fact that I run these operations with very little to zero complaints. And for many years, 15 years now, 16 years in this neighborhood. Clint, I know you have feelings on sidewalk cafes. No, I do, but I, I, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning toward saying, you know, I, I, I understand the point of being consistent, but I'm leaning toward saying it's an hour on Fridays and Saturdays. He does have a point that he does have other businesses and he hasn't, been a problem. So we last approved it in 2016. I don't know what happened between the approval in 2011 and 2016. Sorry? I said we approved a sidewalk cafe last in 2016. So we initially approved one in 2011. Yeah, I, I don't know I, whether or not that happened. We approved it again in 2016. Yeah, you want me to explain that? Sure. Oh, well, at one point in time, we turned it into a bar that did not require outdoor seating. So I gave it up. And then that bar didn't work out very well. So then again, we, that's when we turned it into Mother Pearl, the Tiki Bar, which outdoor seating uh, was a good addition to a Tiki Bar and Polynesian restaurant. Okay, so I, thank you. Okay, so we have to just decide what we're going to do, committee. I mean, I, I'm with, I think I'm, I'm with Clint that this can, I'm okay with this being an exception and, you know, a decade of, of the being in business there with little complaints going to 11. Um, I, I still hold fast to my way of thinking because the moment we start dickering ar around the edges, it's going to be an avalanche. Uh, and, uh, and I don't think we should do that at all. I mean, people who sit on this committee want to decor in everything. Sooner or later, I would like somebody to come and apply and we're, somebody's going to say, yeah, but you're not Sio Fregos. Um, and they're going to want to know why. And we're going to have to explain that. The other thing is, hours, I think but, but that's my feeling, so. And that's how I will vote where at the time comes. The other thing is I think that this might have to be something that's brought to DCA because generally what happens is we amend uh, uh, we amend we have a resolution with respect to the sidewalk cafe that we send to DCA and then our SLA uh, stipulations are amended administratively to conform with the DCA uh, resolution, right? So that they don't require another hearing, um, but that whatever stipulation we have is amended to conform with what we have with DCA. So I think it might be something that has to be amended with DCA before being amended with, with the SLA. Okay. I think okay. you're actually, I, I think you might be right on that. And then I think if we separate. do that, if we decide that we're going to do that, then it, it, we wouldn't need to rehear it as part of the SLA application or as an alteration. Okay, okay I'll check with my attorney. I'm not sure how this all pro this process works. Okay, Thank sure. You. Okay, let us know. Um, so we'll leave it as is for now, and we'll just put that we have this as part of the discussion. The the only other thing I want to just mention in your application, Robbie, you had that your food service was going to end at 1, 1 a.m., even though your hours were till 2 a.m. I mean, our standard is open and serving food all hours. 
It's till that's... one hour. Alexandra just said it was till one hour prior to closing. I was going to leave the, what we had agreed to before, but Clint is right that we've amended sort of what the standard is as the, as the SLA has amended it. And generally, we ask people to serve food all hours, which takes into account that you're going to be shutting down your kitchen. So that doesn't you know, mean if someone hour walks in beforehand. at five till. Yeah. Sorry. I was just going to clarify. It doesn't mean if someone walks in at you know ten till two, you have to necessarily cook them a full meal and serve them. But the wording the SLA has been using more has been open and serving food all hours. But I don't. That's just practically. A, Practically speaking, is the same as within one hour of closing. Yeah. Okay. That's point of are you are you okay with that amendment? And I'll just add it in. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks, Robbie. Okay. So, um, does anybody want to add any other amendments or suggest any other changes? Otherwise, we could vote on this. Alex, I just have a clarification for. Sure, is it Ellen. Facade or not? I'm it's sorry, what did you say? Is it a fixed facade? Oh, it's closed. No. It's fixed. It's, it's a fixed facade. Uh -huh. It's the second uh, second paragraph in that section, the one to the right. Uh, is everybody prepared to vote? All in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. Oh, thank you. There's no opposed or abstain. Everybody said aye. Um, okay, we're going to move to number four, which is also an alteration application of Robbie's, uh, which is for 111 East 7th Street. Um, and it's also to change the type of restaurant it is. When I looked at the application, it also seemed to um, be changing the hours of operation and um, I, having happy hours. No, the, uh, it should be the I'll, same. I'll just, I'm going to go. I'm going to go through it, and then I'll give you an opportunity to to speak to it. So uh, we approved this originally, this location in January of 2007, with stipulations to operate a fondue restaurant. No, uh, closing at 2 a.m. all days, and then we approved it in May this is of 2017. Different it's a different space. It was never a fondue. It's not, it's not 111. Oh, so I'm sorry. I have two. So, spaces but this one at 111. I have, I have two spaces at 111. One used to be a fondue restaurant. The one we're talking about is it very is next door. It's the one that was approved in May of 2017. Yes, 17, correct. So when I try to look up, and I'll get to that, just let me go through my history that I have, and then I will get to that and I'll ask you to clarify. Uh, so at the, also at this address, we approved a beer wine license in May of 2017 with stipulations to operate a full service vegan restaurant serving food all hours, having hours of 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. to 2 a.m. Saturday and Sunday, not using outdoor space, closing its facade at 10, Playing recorded background music, not applying for an alteration without first coming to us, not seeking an upgrade, uh, not hosting pub crawls or party buses, not having unlimited drink specials, having happy hours to 7 p.m., not having wait lines and having staff outside. And the alteration proposal is to change from a vegan Indian to a vegan Mexican or vegan Filipino restaurant. The CFO is for 74 with 14 tables, 44 seats, a 17-foot bar with 12 stools. The hours that I wrote from the application were 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. all days. Kitchen open all hours. No menu is provided. There's no answer about the facade, and I don't know if I'm thinking about the right storefront, but I thought that it had open windows. Um, no TVs, recorded background music, no promoted events, scheduled performances or covers. No security, existing soundproofing, no pump calls or party buses, no happy hours, no wait lines, staff outside. And um, this said that a license was issued, uh, the SLA said that a license or noted that a license was issued October 3rd of 2016 on the LAMP map. So I just want to, I think, understand which location it is and when the license was actually issued and what the license is for, because it also seems to be unclear about whether it's a wine beer license or a beer license? 
Okay, so which space do you want to know about? There's two. You spoke about two spaces. I, I want to know the one that you're applying for. So this is store East. Uh, we were okay. first approved in, was it 2017? 18. Either the end of 17 or 18 uh, as the vegan Japanese with a midnight beer and wine license. Okay. 5 p.m. to midnight, seven days a week. Um, our, we opened that place, our chef passed away. And then I came back to you guys and said, I want to turn it into an Indian restaurant. Uh, you approved that. Um, our chef now recently, it's called Night Music. Our chef decided to leave New York and not come back. Um, so we were, for the last month or so, it's all very new. In the last couple of months, we're trying to figure out what to do because um, several people are leaving New York and deciding not to come back. Um, so we were going between a Filipino restaurant because I have a Filipino chef in my, com in my company who's great or a Mexican because I also have this wonderful Mexican chef in my company. We decided to go with Filipino. So for that space east, we would like to change it into vegan Filipino restaurant, 5 p.m. to midnight, seven days a week, offering food at all times, no outdoor seating. It does have windows that do open. Um, mm -hmm. We'll serve food at all opening hours and all whatever other stipulations you guys need. Because of where you're located, and I probably brought this up with you before, but there is confusion on that block of 7th Street as well as the block of 8th Street above it. Um, you can't have outdoor seating because you're zoned no. RAD. I, I don't want outdoor. Zone. I'm not asking for outdoor seating. It's grandfathered, not compliant, so you can't extend your business to the outside. Although never, that is suspended right now. Sorry? Right. That's suspended by city order right now. Yeah, I understand the, that. The zoning restrictions are suspended right now, but generally, the zoning doesn't permit the outdoor sidewalk cafes. I understand. Um, and, and with respect to the upgrade, the reason that that's written in, was written into it, the resolution in 2018, and you may have uh, just offered it as part of your application because we include it in the questionnaire, but um, it's within 200 feet of a church, right? So, it's within 200 feet uh, of two churches. Two churches. Okay, I missed one. Thank you. Okay. Um, so does anybody have any comments or questions about this? Because if uh, my committee doesn't, I'll go to the making a resolution for this. So did you did you clarify what the hours were? 5 p.m. to midnight, seven days. It is 5 to midnight. Okay. That's... Okay. It's always been that. Okay. So I think what I had was the information for, about the For the other, other space. Part. Yeah, the space next I door, guess. we have 5 p.m. to 2 a.m., correct. Um, okay, so uh, then I will make a resolution. The resolution will state what the applicant's applying for, what the elements of the application are, uh, what the history of the application is for this storefront, and when the license was issued. Um, and that, given that this has been an existing business um, that's only seeking to amend uh, the type of food served, that we would approve this with the essentially the same stipulations governing its method of operation, and those being as follows. Um, operate a full-service vegan Filipino restaurant serving food all hours, um, having hours of 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. all days, not using outdoor space. Um, having a closed facade. It has windows that open. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the last one. Um, having a facade that closed with windows that close, doors or windows that close at 10 p.m. or whenever there's any amplified sound. Um, but having recorded background music. Uh, no DJs, live music. Uh, promoted events, scheduled performances, or events with covers. Uh, no pub crawls or party buses. No happy hours. Uh, no alteration without first coming before us. No upgrade without coming before us. Um, there's, in the whereas clauses, we should indicate within 200 feet of two churches. 
to houses of worship. Um, no happy hours, no wait lines, and a deaf person responsible for overseeing uh, crowds and noise outside. Is there any amendment um, or addition to the resolution? No? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So five of us. Okay. Uh, thank you, Robbie. Uh, because, thank you. Uh, because we're hearing you in this format, um, I have to send you or whoever you want me to send the stipulations to tomorrow, or the office will send you the stipulations tomorrow. We'll get them now. Um, the email, and then you'll re you'll re send them back via email. Do you have an email address? Is it going to be you or somebody else? And do uh, you have my, an email my address? Office. Like you guys should have it. Alicia, L I S H A, at de Rossi global that's diaz and david e r o s s i global g l o b a l dot com okay um three and four okay thank you thanks guys have a good night you too. we're moving on now to number five is the applicant for number five it's city orchard um 174 first avenue here I did not see anyone sign. I'm looking just to make sure. I don't think anyone signed in in the chat for that item. And I was going to just make so we'll, an announcement. I know there's a few people sure. that have joined the meeting a little bit later. So if you've joined, can you please sign in in the chat box with your name and affiliation or if you're here for an item or just interested? But yeah, at the moment, I do not see anyone that had signed in for City Orchard or. We'll move on to number six and we'll net, let anybody um, who um, hasn't signed in uh, have the opportunity to sign in. And then maybe uh, the applicant for number six will show up. I mean, number five will show up. Uh, applicant for number six, which is Cheese Grill, 188 Allen Street. Yes. And no. I did I did <laughs> not see anyone sign in for that item either. The fastest way we've made it through the list yet. No, I'm not so fast. <laughs> oh, oh here's Frank. Frank. <laughs> he just wanted to give a delayed response so you could get your hopes up. Oh. Um, Frank, is your client here? Yeah, can I ask you to go on to the next one? I know he's here. I'll text my guy. You also got down and out in Brooklyn. Yes. I'll text the uh, cheese grill guy. Okay. Are you also here on that one? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're moving on to number eight, which is 503 East 6th Street. I guess Frank signed in and, and also somebody named uh, Joshua Rickles. Is that right? There you are. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so this is an application for a tavern with full re menu recorded live music consisting of small jazz and acoustic acts, no outdoor space on the first floor in basement. This was the uh, location that had the corporate name Cholo Noir. I, I don't remember what the DBA was. Um, Somebody, could somebody mute just while I'm talking because there's background noise. Is that you, Joshua? Okay, thanks. Uh, so the um, only license for this location, we uh, denied in June of 2016. And in June of 2018, um, the SLA issued the license June um, 19th of 2017. And the business closed in um, August of 2018. Uh, we did hear an OP license for a tavern uh, for somebody who lived across the street. 
and they withdrew uh, because of our concerns in March of 2019. Uh, this is an application with a CFO of 74 with 10 tables and 39 seats, a 20 foot bar with 12 stools. Proposed hours are 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. Sunday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. Thursday through Saturday. Uh, it says kitchen uh, open all hours, serving seafood and continental food. There's no answer about the facade. It says we'll maintain existing facade. It looks fixed, but I can't I can't tell in pictures. Uh, no TVs, recorded background music. Uh, there's no uh, no promoted events, scheduled performances or covers. So the the live music I referenced was in the SLA notice. In the questionnaire that the applicant submitted, there wasn't anything about live music. Uh, four to five private parties per month, no pub calls or party buses, no happy hours, no wait lines, staff outside. This applicant has operated um, an indoor-outdoor beer garden at 272 Meserol Street in Brooklyn since 2014 uh, with an OP license issued um, November 13th of 2014. Uh, and I counted 23 OPs within 500 feet of this location. We actually heard this applicant for another location um, on East 3rd Street. I'm sorry, I'm just going to it. Um, in July and September of 2018, and we denied it. It was 197 East 3rd Street, which was previously um, no Malice Palace. Um, now this is the opportunity for the applicant to make a statement or clarify any of the information that I provided. Go ahead. Um, I, I didn't actually say what you said about the facade, so I'm, I'm not sure how to clarify on that part. I said it says maintaining existing facade, but I don't know what the existing facade looks like. So I don't know if it opens or it's fixed. Josh, do the windows open? Uh, they do, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Is there anything else you want to say about your application? Um, oh, yeah, I mean, this I. This is your opportunity to say it. We had come before you before at a different location, and you'd expressed concern with that particular location. Uh, so we were able to find a new location that doesn't seem to have the same problems. Um, change the concept a little bit just to make it more uh, food orientated um, and after learning some history about the building itself and, and the neighborhood more in general um, I also live in the neighborhood now and, and you know I've been here since the last time we saw each other um, I live two blocks away and uh, wanted to have somewhere close to where I'm living um, I've you know, since I had to shut down the, the location in Brooklyn because of COVID, and so this is now my, my priority. Are you not opening your business in Brooklyn or reopening your business in Brooklyn? We just closed, we just closed it. Yeah, we will, we will not be reopening. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to say? Not me. Okay. Uh, is there anybody here who has any questions or comments from the audience about the committee members? I did not. And let me double check. I did not see anyone that signed in to speak for this item. I don't see any hands raised. So. Uh, do committee members have any questions or comments? <laughs> The only thing, I mean, my only thing I question is because it is toward a mid-block location, I'm, I kind of question the 4 a.m. hours on the weekends. Um, we're in between um, a performance venue on the one side, uh, which is uh, Alan Cummings Club, and um, another yeah. location on the very corner. Um, and, you know, what we'd like to do is, is try and catch as many of the people you know, leaving those locations as we can, um, and just, you know, being in kind of keeping with the surrounding area, I guess. So uh, maybe I can be uh, more specific in that 
you you picked a location that we had certain problems with on East Third Street, and I appreciate that you tried to find another location. Um, East Sixth Street has also had a history of issues, not necessarily the same issues, but similar issues. Uh, there has, over time, in the community board's history, been issues with the fact that there are back-to-back -back licensed businesses on that side of the street on East Sixth Street. This was an additional licensed business that we did not want. It's only ever had one previous licensee because it was a longstanding gym. Um, and then Cholo Noor was the first and only licensee for the business. Uh, but before that, we had um, we have the, the beer wine license at 507, Pineapple Club at 509, which was a previously licensed location. Um, and even then, we reduced we asked them to reduce hours. Uh, when they applied for the restaurant that they wanted to have. Uh, history Identity, which was a club, it had a very bad history um, and was a club before it was Identity. I mean, I'm not counting Anatomy because they were the same owners, but before Anatomy, it was a different club. Uh, Buenos Aires, which has very early closing hours but has been a longstanding restaurant, and then Club Cummings, which has 4 a.m. hours and was a long-standing and when I say long-standing continuously operated bar essentially since the 30s it has been a bar um, over time there have been issues with the various businesses being next to each other um, specifically uh, what used to be club coming what the prior business was uh, then 509 and 511 all together and the hope for us was that we wouldn't end up on a a residential street, even at close to the corner, with more businesses that were going to close at 4 a.m. That was the issue that we had with the person who applied for the tavern, even though it had daytime operating hours and he lived across the street. It was that he wanted to have late night hours and we didn't want to have late night hours. It was also the issue that existed for Cholo Noir, which ultimately got a license from the SLA, um, but we heard it multiple times and it reduced its hours somewhat but it also had a um it wanted to have like a restaurant pseudo bar um bar Art business. gallery but ultimately restaurant bar business on this side street that we were hoping to not add to when we already had a history with issues a history of issues with the number of businesses and the types of businesses over time so our hope here was if we have to approve something, I think our hope here is that, I mean, we've denied the last thing, but if, and we denied the thing before it. But if we have to approve something, it would be something with more moderate hours. And yes, more of a restaurant than a bar because we already have those on this side street. And Pineapple Club, uh, the hours that we ultimately gave them were, um, or that we ultimately agreed to were 12 a.m. Um, Sunday through uh, Wednesdays and 2 a.m. Thursdays through Saturdays. And they were the most recent approval in July of 2019 of that block. But it is a block because it's licensed. We're, we're anticipating licenses from 503 to 513. And that's not even taking into account the things that are opposite it, uh, it, which are also licensed but are relatively benign businesses. Um, okay, hey, I, I mean, Alec, did you say that this was licensed till four? Um, I'm not sure what the SLA approved. When no, when we heard uh, Cholo, Cholo Noir. They changed their hours of operation. I'll let you know what they changed them to. But so we heard was. them initially. Right. I mean, they could have gone to the SLA and asked for anything. So initially, they asked for um, 2 a.m. Mondays through 2 a.m. all days with just different opening hours on the weekends. Um, then when they came back in September, oh, I'm sorry, they came back, I, I forgot, they came back in August. Um, they asked for 1 a.m. all days with different opening hours during the week uh, from the weekends when they wanted to open earlier. 
So that's what they were asking for. Josh, <clears throat> Josh's problem is, as he's explained, you're making it very difficult for him to compete with the other two premises if he has to close earlier. But then everything would have a 4 a.m. license everywhere, Frank, and that's not what, that's not what happens. This is unique because it's dropped between two 4 a.m. licenses, correct? No, it's uh, the 507 one is a 12 a.m. license. Pineapple Club, which is 509, is 12 a.m. and 2 a.m. Uh, identity, which is closed, I think at this point it was a 4 a.m. license. Ago, Alex. Buenos, Buenos Aires is a 12 a.m. license. Yeah, but then nobody has occupied that space since Frank. And really, I probably reverted back to residential, although I don't know if anybody's actually brought that up. Um, so all the uh, the only one that's operating right now with a 4 a.m. license is Club Coming, and that's a um, continuously licensed location since the 1930s. And generally on side streets, we don't approve 2 a.m. and 4 a.m., which, uh, which is another discussion I think we had when we um, had the discussion about 197 East 3rd Street. No Malice Palace was a business that had been there for some time, since the 90s. So, I mean, do, committee members, does anybody else want to be heard or make a comment with respect to the application? Or is there anything else you want to speak to other than hours necessarily? Herman? Um, Ellen? I can see Herman, but I can't see Ellen. So I just have to yell out for Ellen. Uh, it's Ellen. I think these hours are a bit excessive. I mean, I, I agree to their point. I would say, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, normally we would push them for earlier during the week. In this case, I would probably be fine because it is toward the end of the block. There's not residential between there and the avenue, which is where everyone's going to be coming and going. I guess I don't have as much of a problem with it being two. I just don't know that I'm comfortable adding another 4 a.m. license on a side street. What if it was 4 a.m. on the weekends or Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Friday, Saturday? That's that's what he's proposing. That's what's proposed. Oh, only on those two days? On Friday, Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. It's a 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. Sunday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. Thursday through Saturday. I don't know. I mean, I know, I know I'm know, i more of a night owl, so I'm, I don't have a big issue with that, but... All right. Herman, do you want to speak to this? I think we have to come to a consensus so that we can at least iron out the details of the resolution. Uh, so I'm going to, I'll let you speak and then I'll ask for a straw poll. I, 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 will, I was just thinking about it for a little while and the 4 a.m. on a side street is not my cup of tea, so to speak. All right. Um, can I ask a so question? Gonna, sure, Frank. Before you go to Stroopal, um, what if we did 3 a.m. on Friday and Saturday and 2 a.m. the rest of the week? Could you live with something like that? Just as a compromise. I, I couldn't. Okay. But I can ask other committee members. I couldn't. Frank, Jesse, what? I'm fine with that. I could. Jesse, uh, Herman? Uh, not me. Not me. The Ellen or I spoke Um, I could go either way, but it looks like there'd only be two of us, so that would fail. Just the two of us. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'll uh, do a straw poll in favor of approving this uh, with stipulations, which it would include amended hours of operation, which we could discuss. Um, uh, everybody in favor of approving it with amended hours um, as part of the stipulation? Just raise your hand. Yes, with amended hours. Okay. Herman? 
yes, I didn't see any reaction from him. Go ahead. Yes, we really made it always when at four o'clock. I don't understand. Okay, so then we'll go to the making of the resolution. Uh, and before we do that, can we, can can you just speak, um, please? And I'm speaking to the applicant about uh, why it's classified as a tavern with a full menu and a kitchen. Um, more for the historical perspective. Um, this area, as I'm sure most everybody knows, uh, was Little Germany. Um, way back in the day, I have German heritage and my family passed through this neighborhood. Um, and saloon doesn't really, uh, you know, which is what an oyster saloon was called back then, doesn't quite have uh, a ring that people want to go to. Tavern has more of a, a classification that, you know, people feel a little bit more comfortable with. I'm sorry. So it's tavern versus full restaurant, which are classifications that the SLA uses. And then oh, maybe see, we can speak to whether or not you're going to put the word tavern in your title. Gotcha. But it didn't sound like you were. Go ahead. Um, because the, the SLA asks, you know, are you going to be a restaurant with a full menu and a kitchen that's open all hours? Um, and tavern is minimal food. Okay, it, well, and it can be a kitchen or less than a full service kitchen with some kind of food all hours. So I just wanted you to speak to the difference so we understood it in the making of the resolution. Go ahead, uh, Frank. Uh, you speak? I was just going to say, it's, it's, it's nomenclature. It's a tavern with a full menu, basically serving food during all hours of operation. So for your purposes, you'd probably consider it a restaurant. It's a restaurant. Certainly, it certainly has a full kitchen and a full menu. Well, you, you're the one who put in the notice that said tavern. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I apologize. That might have been almost a year ago that I did that. So that notice is really old. We've okay. moved this meeting dozens of times, so I apologize for that. It's okay. I know. Yeah, I know you have. In the interest of moving this along, would you do 2 a.m. seven days a week? And just put that's it what, to bed. That's we'll discuss it. We'll discuss it at the point that we get to the resolution. I'm just going to lay out the whereas clauses and the other things that. Uh, Alex, I don't mean to interrupt you. We all agree to. I don't mean to interrupt you, but when you say we'll discuss it, do you take our input the also? Committee, the committee members will discuss it. That's why Let I'm me asking just lay now. Out the rest of the that's why I'm asking Let now before you go into committee. Well, the resolution is going to be the same regardless of whether or not we, we agree with 2 a.m. or not. So I just want to get, because we've decided that we're going to do a motion to approve with amended stipulations. Okay. I just want to get through part of the making of the resolution so that I know where we're headed. Um, so the resolution is going to state what the application is for, the elements of the application, uh, the the location since it's relevant to our discussion right the location of the residential street um, the history of the location the number of ops the history of the applicant um, and we can include that the applicant now lives in the neighborhood since he he uh he mentioned it as part of the discussion um the uh And I'll put in a whereas clause with the amendment that this is a restaurant, not a tavern, as as identified in the original SLA notice. Now, um, with respect to the stipulation, um, it's restaurant with a kitchen open and serving food all hours. Right, Seafood Continental. We'll get back to hours, no outdoor space. Um, facade closing at 10 p.m. And I'm sorry, Frank, is the questionnaire correct? Because it's different from the, we didn't speak to this different from the SLA notice, is it recorded background music? 
only. Josh. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear the question. I've got, yeah. Do we have background music only? That's what I have. Recorded background music? There, you know, I, I would like to have some small live music. There's a small stage in the back corner. Yeah, have, would just be like, you know, jazz acts during the weekend. But. Yeah, which he, they shouldn't have had to begin with, but I guess we'll speak to that. May not be able to on the side street. Okay. It, it, it's not integral to the business, so if, if you're saying that you would rather not, I understand, you know. I... All right, um, so we have to address hours and music. Uh, so, um, no alteration without first coming before us, no pub crawler, party buses, no happy hours, no wait lines, no uh, staff outside, um, no unlimited drink specials. So what, um, what the applicant's attorney has proposed is um, this business being open from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. all day as opposed to the originally proposed hours. Do you wanna discuss that? And going to the committee. I'm, I'm okay with those hours. Good. Ellen and Herman. I'm okay with that hour. So. Okay, so that's three of us. So then I'll add it in as 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. all days for the hours. Now, with respect to the music, what type, uh, and this is for Joshua, what type were you in, thinking of? I know you said live music in the back. Go ahead. Can you expand on what that would be and how it, you would have it incorporated into the business? Um, it, it would be non amplified. So, what I would just propose would be having uh, jazz musicians on a small uh, elevated area in the back of the room. Uh, it's an area that couldn't hold any more than three people. Um, I was envisioning just having it on the weekends to just add to the ambiance of the room. So I will note that I just checked the zoning map and it's in a, it's still in the commercial overlay. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I know. so I think it, I think to, to respond to Frank, I think it technically would be permitted. And then we would have to just decide whether or not we want to permit it. Does anybody want to speak to it or ask any questions with respect to it? Um, so I was just looking at the application here. I wanted to look at the floor plan. So if you look on the floor plan, essentially in the back of the room on, I guess it would be the top part of the floor plan. Uh, there's a small area with uh, two tables. Um, so so on that, the in the one picture, it looks like that's not, is that closed off as a separate room? No, no, it's not separate. It's just a, it's a slightly elevated area that's it's about 10 inches high. Um, sort of oh, I see. Okay, I see. So, There'll but it's not tables that, on it when it's not when it wouldn't be used for. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, it's on proof in that place. I don't know. You'll have to speak to that. How long soundproofed is it? Uh, I I did add in further soundproofing to the the walls around it and the ceiling, um, with the idea it's that. The thing of what? I'm sorry. Consisting of what? Um, I the, the same sort of soundproofing I've used in venues in the past before where you have uh, a, a floating false wall essentially with um, specifically mandated, uh, you know, drywall, um, which is sealed. The outlets are pulled out of the wall itself, so there's no holes going through the wall. Um, 
has extra insulation in it and all the studs are isolated from the wall itself. The ceiling, we added another drop ceiling and put in further insulation into the ceiling above that area. Since I'm not looking at it, is there anybody residing above? Uh, there are apartments above it, yeah. Uh, is it a five-story or a six-story building? Uh, it's a five-story. Um, I personally would like to discuss that some, some other time because um, is there anybody from the building that we have on line right now that could attest to the fact that they would not be disturbed or have been in um, when other business was there in the past? Well, the last business, the business before shouldn't have had a stage. It, the business before it was a gym. So I don't know about the level of noise or the level of soundproofing. That was, remember that was, uh, I forgot the name of the gym. It was a long standing gym. Been there as long as I've been in the neighborhood. Yeah, right after that, I mean, not, not for very long. There was a uh, karaoke bar in there for about two months. Um, I don't know what happened to them, why that happened. Not approved by us. I think that it was just a stealth operation. Oh, <laughs> like not even heard by us. Oh, really? Um, oh. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm also uncomfortable with approving any kind of live music for this location at this point. Um, does anybody else want to speak to this? Uh, at this point, with what I'm thinking and what I expressed a while ago, um, I'm not urging him to come back, but I would, wouldn't want him, I wouldn't want to be able to approve something that I have a large amount of doubt of what the result will be. So I, I wouldn't be able to vote to approve it at this time. So that's a no, Herman. Is that yes. right? Okay. Clint and Ellen. Do you want to be heard? I'm I'm not totally opposed to, you know, a small three pay three piece acoustic live music here at this location. I do tend to kind of agree with Herman that just given that it wasn't, you know, it really hasn't been a space. I know he says he soundproofed it and I it sounds like he actually did a decent job probably with it, but I would like to have some some more assurances from either the people that live above or something else once he's open that it's not going to be a problem because we we've had live music in these old buildings and it echoes or carries through spaces that are very strange in these old buildings and can bother people three floors up yeah i mean i can understand that i'm also willing to you know limit it to you know much earlier in the day um you know if we want to say it has to be done by you know midnight i have no problem with that at all either or, you know, um, but. Ellen? Uh, due to the lack of additional information, I would prefer, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm, I, it's, I'm not comfortable supporting the live music. Okay, so I think we can only approve it at this stage. I'm all finished draft, drafting the resolution with recorded background music, no DJs, no live music, no promoted events, scheduled performances, or events with cover fees. Um, if you want to come back to us about live music, you should reach us here, the residents in the building and the adjacent buildings um, to discuss you know, adequate soundproofing um, and how that would look and how often you would have the live music where they would be located. Um, and other people have done that now um, via email and even via in-person meetings um, for locations. Um, so you shouldn't feel like this time is prohibiting you from doing that. Um, is there an amendment or any uh, addition to the resolution that exists now? Because we addressed both the hours of operation and the music. So 
it's a completed resolution. I'll put a whereas clause in, I'll put that a live music was uh, proposed and that um, we uh, didn't feel like we could approve it at this point given um, that there hadn't been any uh, outreach to the surrounding residents about the live music and um, didn't seem like it was well developed. Um, I won't write it like that, but I will write a whereas clause to the effect that okay, we weren't prepared right. to do that on it at this point. Um, any committee members? Are you prepared to vote? I am, yeah. Yes. All right, all in favor? Yes. All right, there are no oppose, no abstain, so five yeses. Um, we're going to move on to. Alex? What? Do we do we have a second? Do I need to record the second? Oh, I didn't even ask for a second. Did I just said all in favor? <laughs> Is anybody second that time. motion we already voted on? I'll second it. Did you second it? Okay. Okay. Second. okay. Thank you, Clint. I think I'm ahead of myself. So thank you, Jesse. Sure. Um, Cheese grill guys. Second is three and four. Cheese grill guys in. Okay. Um, I think we might move on to number nine and just go back. Uh, Frank, Frank, are you the person who's going to receive the stipulations for number um, five and number, yes. I mean, number six and number eight? Yes. Okay. Thank you. We'll just that down. Um, I, uh, I'll defer to the committee though. Do you want to move back to number six or go to number nine? I don't. I don't have a preference. Okay. All right. I said number nine, so I'm going to go to number nine. Number nine is an application for 191 Christie Street. We're here. Uh, thank you. So this is an application for a tavern with minimal food, recorded music, DJs, um, security, no outdoor space on the ground floor and basement of this location. The uh, last OP that we heard for this location was approved in September of 2015 with stipulations to operate a tavern serving food all hours, having hours of 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. Sunday through Tuesday, 5 p.m. to 4 a.m. Wednesday through Saturday, having a closed facade with the entrance door closed at all times. Uh, not using outdoor space, installing additional soundproofing if necessary, consistent with the recommendations of a sound engineer, employing security all day, playing recorded uh, music, and having DJs and live music consisting of acoustic piano or guitar, but not having promoted events, scheduled performances, or covers, installing a sound system consisting of uh, distributed speakers to minimize noise and bass, not applying for an alteration, not having happy hours, Excuse me. Um, not hosting mm -hmm. pub calls or party buses, not having wait lines, and having staff outside. Uh, this application has a C of O of uh, 275 with 19 tables, 78 seats, a 24 foot bar with 15 stools. Uh, there was a diagram submitted that said it was a 25 foot bar, or is at proposed hours are 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. all days a prep area serving small place all hours, a closed facade, no TVs recorded and live music and DJs at entertainment levels. Uh, there is a piano, uh, it wasn't specified, but there was a piano drawn into the diagram that was uh, provided. No promoted event schedule performances or events with cover fees. Uh, and then on the stipulations at the end of the questionnaire, the applicant wrote in no nightclub promoted, nightclub style promoted events. Existing soundproofing, no pub crawls or party buses, happy hours to 9 p.m., no wait lines, staff outside. I counted 14 OPs and one pending OP within 500 feet. All right, this is your opportunity in speaking to the applicant to make a presentation or a statement with respect to your application. Go ahead. To address. Hi, I'm. Oh, oh, go right, ahead. Sorry, Alex. Let me do my little bit first and you go. Okay, whoever wants to go first. Just okay. to address what you said about the insert about no night lifestyle promoters. The only reason I put that in is I had a case with the SLA recently 
where they said that someone advertising a dinner on Eventbrite, like a cooking class, was the equivalent to being a promoter. So I wanted to distinguish something that they could do as an advertiser or market event without it being the type of nightlife or nightclub type of promoter that would ever distribute stuff uh, you know, by flyers on the street. Uh, everything that you said, I think, is pretty accurate. I would just add that before it was at all, it was the Experimental Cocktail Club. And then before that, it was a place called the Kush Lounge. Arthur Carpati is one of the two principals of this entity that will apply for the license. He's also the co-owner of the building with the other applicant principal. He has lived above this building with his family uh, for 20 plus years. My understanding that Cush Lounge and Experimental Cocktail Club had a 4 a.m. every day for whatever reason or for reason unknown to me at all who was there since 2015 agreed to 2 a.m. on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, but 4 a.m. I don't every think he day? had any experience. I'm sorry. I think he had no license experience. So to the contrary, Arthur uh, has been licensed and on a number of other licenses. I think that was part of the issue. The only issue with Ed Al was no license experience. I remember with Experimental Cocktail, I think it was their first location in New York, but it was also maybe different because it was a transfer of a 4 a.m. and I guess they had some experience elsewhere. It doesn't really matter. Arthur uh, has been licensed. He does have a place in Chelsea. It's been licensed for a while and is on good terms mm -hmm. with the community there. As I said before, he lives above the building, or he lives in the building above this uh, bar lounge with his family. So if anyone's concerned with it being a good neighbor, it would be him. Okay, thank you. Um, does he want to speak? Sure, first I apologize. I don't have great internet, so not having the video helps um, hear everything. Um, you know, I've been in the neighborhood for 20 years. I um, I run a few businesses myself with licenses. I'm a theatrical producer. And I, you know, really watching the different people having come through the space. I have a vision of just creating something magical and special. And, um, you know, it's changing times and I really want to have a place that people feel comfortable in coming to and it it hasn't been that way for a number of years okay um you know magical and special is what the guy who opened the box said <laughs> no he, 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 said, he said something a little different he said <laughs> no, I think he opened something a little different, but i feel like he said magical and special to us um, uh, are, is there anybody signed up to speak to this? And then I'll ask the, um, the committee members if they have any uh, questions yes. or comments for you. Yes, we did have, we did have yeah. at least one. I know Michelle Campo has signed up to speak and I know there was a couple other people that didn't specifically mention it, but I'm, they may be willing or wanting to speak on this item as well. Michelle, if you want to. Michelle, or is she still here? Let's see. Did you lose Actually, her? It looks like Michelle is no longer here. She she was here and she had said she was here to speak on this item, but she's no longer here in the meeting, so. Well, we can move on. Maybe she'll uh, re- yeah. And was there, there was a couple other people yeah. as well that were from like the Bowery Block Association, I'm, I'm wondering, I don't know, Gilda was one of them. I think Gilda, are you still here? Yes, I'm Gilda is still in the meeting. Planning to speak. I just wanted to uh, observe. Okay, so you don't have anything to say. Okay, yeah. so is there anyone else that wants to say anything on this item before we move on? Okay. Okay, committee members, do you have any comments or questions? I I just have a, oh, sorry. No, Go sorry. Ahead, I'll, mine is quick. I just saw it said uh, 9 p.m. happy hours. 
of when they would end. Yeah, and Alex, you had mentioned that there was no happy. So I just this is a little discrepancy there. Um. No, the prior business had no happy hours. This applicant is asking for 9 p.m. happy hours. Oh, prior. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, cool. Sorry, go ahead. Yes. Could you maybe speak to when you, um, to the type of music and different types of music and when you would have them? There'd be background recorder music regularly. There's a DJ booth uh, in the uh, sort of rear corner. There'd probably be a background DJ playing regularly. I mean, as we sort of stipulated, there wouldn't be any scheduled performances or ticketed events. And uh, as you also noted, the diagram has a, a, a piano for live acoustical music at different times. It's not gonna be a scheduled performance or ticketed event. So that's what I was gonna ask about when you had checked off live music, what what is that entailing? Is it acoustic piano music? Were you talking about a, you know, be, a rock band or? No, it'd be the acoustical live music. I was looking at the um, the resolution for uh, for at all. Hold on, and we wanted to track the same language that was used for it, which was uh, where is it? So it's live music consisting of acoustic piano or guitar. Should, yes. That's what that's what you're proposing. The same type of music. Yes. Uh, what they, whatever they said, which was, I think what you just read, live music consisting of live acoustic piano or guitar, but will not have promoted events, scheduled performances, or any event in which a cover fee will be charged. And if you tell me that it's okay that they have on their website something that says, uh, you know, acoustic piano, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. or whatever it is on their website, that that's not considered advertising by a nightlife or club promoter, we're okay with it. Um, well, I'm confused because you said that uh, promotion is saying you're having some sort of d dinner event, and I understand that not to be a promotion. No, but what, what it's I, the fact that it was put on Eventbrite that makes it a promoted event. What I was saying is I had an attorney at the SLA saying that we violate, this is a totally different matter in Community Board 5, saying that a licensee violated stipulations by having a promoter or promoted events by having advertisements for things on Eventbrite. And they said that that was the equivalent to having a promoter or promoted event. Well, that, so, is, that is what I would consider an outside promoted event. I think the, I, I thought you said the example was a dinner, but you know, so I'm saying I mean, that's different that from this example, method of operation, but that's an example of a not promoted event to me is promoting a, like a special dinner or a dinner event as opposed to other promoted events. But if you're saying for, all you're doing is putting on Facebook or your Twitter account, or your Instagram that you you have piano on Saturday night, then that's not a promoted event. That's that's the understanding that we're looking for. We're not trying to have the nightclub type of promoters that sell bottles and things like that, or say there's a ticketed thing. It's mm -hmm. on Thursdays and Fridays. Enjoy X Y Z at one ninety one mm -hmm. Christie. Um, yeah, that's not a promoted event no. from our perspective. Um, okay, well, so then it would the SLA let them know that too. Well, if if only they would listen to us, that would be a different story. But don't worry, we feel the same way sometimes. They listen sometimes. Sometimes, um, and sometimes so, that's all you can hope for from anybody. Um, go ahead, Clint. I'm, so I I was I had two questions. One was the clarification of the type of live music, and what was my other question? Um, oh, Closed windows, I, fixed facade. No, I was just going to ask, I mean, I know, know at some of your other events and, you know, he mentioned he does theatrical productions. There's not going to be any type, there's no intent of this to be any type of, you know, performance space or have any kind of performances or whatsoever there, right? No. No. Okay. That's, I, I didn't get that from the application. I just wanted to clarify, clarify that. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with this. Okay. Um, is there anybody else, or do you want us to go to the making of a resolution? Good. Okay. Um, so it would be whereas what the applicant what the applicant is applying for, what the elements of the application are, 
the history of the location, what was last approved there, uh, the number of OPs, uh, the history of the applicant, um, that he lives in the building and um, operates the business that was mentioned and what his history was as he stated in, his, in the questionnaire. Uh, and then um, that we would approve this, given that it was a tavern, with a, a full on premises license, we approve this with uh, similar or the same stipulations, um, that being as follows that it would operate as a tavern. Uh, with less than a full service kitchen serving food all hours. Um, the hours would be 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. all days. There would be no outdoor space. The facade would be closed. Um, and consistent with the last one, um, we would include, and this may be something we have to write at the bottom, that the entrance door would be closed uh, Closed at all times. I'm sorry, I have to I have to move my cat. It's keeping me from writing. Um, um, that uh, we can speak to whether or not we want to include um, anything about additional soundproofing, which was in the last resolution. Um, but uh, employing security. as needed, um, playing recorded music and having DJs and live music with live music consisting of uh, acoustic piano or guitar, but not having promoted events, scheduled performances, events with cover fees. Um, not applying for an alteration without first coming to before us, uh, having happy hours, to 9 p.m. Uh, not hosting pub crawls or party buses, not having unlimited drink specials, not having wait lines and having staff outside. Uh, the last um, applicant had uh, stipulations with respect to installing additional soundproofing if necessary uh, and install and installing and maintaining a sound system consisting of distributed speakers to minimize noise and bass. Does anybody want to be heard on whether or not we should include that or omit it? Uh, any, any discussion of soundproofing or the sound system in this uh, resolution? I'll volunteer from Arthur that if additional soundproofing is necessary, he'll do it. I know that with Experimental Cocktail Club, they had Ben Houghton and they did some acoustical engineering work. I think that with et al, they were supposed to sort of revisit it and upgrade it as necessary. Frankly, I don't know mm -hmm. if there's any problems since then. I'm not aware of any complaints by anybody, but uh, I think for everyone's sanity and Arthur's maintenance of the space, if there's something reasonable, it'll get done. All right, does anybody want to comment on that or how it might look at a resolution? Well, so I think, I think we would just go with, you know, we'll install additional soundproofing if necessary or as needed is I guess what he's, he's volunteering for, so. Okay, yeah, and that's what I wrote. So if everybody agrees to that, then we'll add that in. Um, is that fine? That's okay. fine, um, that's fine. Oh, no, I meant the committee members, but thank you. <laughs> um, Sorry. It's okay. Uh, so uh, is there a second for the resolution? I'll second. All in favor? Yes. Ellen, was that a yes? Yes. Yes. Sorry, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I thought I heard you speaking. Uh, okay. So uh, where do I have the stipulation set? Should I send an email to Ed 
I mean, it's, it's my email at abv at dh. Well, it's a, it would actually be sent by somebody else. So why don't you give me the email address? A, like Apple, B, boy, V, Victor, at dhc, David Henry Charles, legal.com. And you're Alexander Victor? Yes. Making sure, I'm the, I'm making sure I have the name with the right initials. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Well, yep. So it should get it should be sent to you sometime tomorrow. Have a good night. Thank you, everybody. You too. Take care. Okay, moving uh, back to number six. Um, Frank, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so moving, and your your client is there. Is here. I'm Excel. Can he um, sign into the chat room? Because I think we only see him as a phone number. No, oh, I think if it's Emic, he's connecting to audio. He hasn't ever actually officially signed in to the meeting, like join the meeting officially. His video's there. We can kind of see him. Nice cop. <laughs> Is that the couch? That's is that the what couch. You mean? The couch with the yeah. funny, like, little waving in the corner? Yeah. Yep. And I see his hand, but he's not paying attention to us. <sighs> Can you text him on his phone, or is he using his phone? I tried texting him before. And I <laughs> Should we, do we need to do something for five and, like, make him up, like, that they're not here? Do we need to Yeah, vote? we'll do that last. I just want to get this one out of the way but i don't know how we i can do it okay i can do you it can do it yeah. without him i can do it without him um well really we need to have him here but i'm i'm confused that he doesn't know that he's can you kick him out um clint to see if he'll try to reconnect i can i can move him back to the waiting room let's see if that does it yeah, why don't you try that to see if he tries to reconnect? Okay. Let's see. I'll move him back in and see if that didn't seem to do anything. No, it seems to be the same. His name is there, so maybe he can hear yeah. us now. Frank, you want to give him a yell? I'm trying. I think he probably well, has so us muted. The audio is connected. Yeah, he's now, his audio is now connected, but. Excuse me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I just texted him. Okay. Okay. What's his last name, Frank? David. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I can go through the application. Uh, we denied an OP license for this applicant in October of 2017 and then approved a wine beer license in November of 2017 with stipulations to operate a full service cheese focused restaurant serving food all hours, having hours of 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sundays, 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. Monday through, through excuse me, Thursday, 11 a.m. to 3 a.m. by Friday and Saturday, not using outdoor space. Closing the facade at 11, playing recorded background music, not applying for an alteration without first coming before us, not having happy hours, not hosting pub crawls or party buses, not having unlimited drink specials, not having mate lines, and having staff outside. Uh, the CFO is 74 with four tables and 36 seats, 20 seats at tables. He seems to have been have joined us. 12 seats at a counter or rail in the diagram a six foot uh, bar or service, service counter, the same um, proposed hours of operation, kitchen open all hours, um, open windows closing at 11, um, one TV. It also looks like uh, there are open doors in the picture, but 
uh, the applicant can speak to that. One TV, recorded music, no promote events, scheduled performances or events with cover fees, no security, no soundproofing, no pub crawls or party buses, no happy hours, no wait lines. There's no agreement about having staff outside, although there was a statement that there would be staff overseeing uh, what was going on outside, and it's also an existing stipulation. Uh, according to the applicant, um, the business has been open since 2016 and licensed since July of 2019. The license was issued July 2nd, 2019. I counted 27 OPs and three pending OPs within 500 feet. All right, this is um, your opportunity to make a statement. Where'd he go? To make a statement about the application um, or a presentation about it. Go ahead. Emmett, you there? Yes. Emmett? He's, he's here, it says connecting to audio and we can't see your picture, but we can hear you. Yeah, but I'm, I'm speaking to him, I don't think he hears me. No, it says connecting to audio, so I don't think he can hear us. Well, as you know, as you said, Alex, we originally wanted liquor at this location maybe 18 months ago. Is that about right? Um, and we set up a wine and beer. Um, the location um, actually needs liquor. It needed liquor before COVID. And it, boy, does it need it right now. He has been a good neighbor for the years he's been there. When you see the distinction between when the place opened and how long he's been there. He was the manager of the premises who took it from the prior owner. I think it was called Maradona. Um, which sucks, which was part of the reason we didn't want to issue an OP to a new place at that location. Hopefully Emic has, has cleaned it up and, and made you like him now. Although he was the manager for Maradona, wasn't he Maradona's manager? But yes. Um, so go ahead. Anything else you want to say with respect oh, to the it's application? The same, it's the same operation. There'll be no changes in anything we're doing. Um, it's pri primarily a cheese-focused restaurant. I have nothing more. Okay. Um, is, is there anybody um, who has questions or comments other than the committee members? Then we can move to the committee members. Are you communicating with him via text, Frank? Nope. No. One way, I'm just talking and no one's answering me. Yeah. I don't know what it's doing. There's no one, no one has signed up to speak. No, you know, there were no public members here to sign up to speak, so. I've, ch I've chatted him on a private chat to get involved, but I don't think he realizes how to do that. Okay. Um, do you want him to call? Can he call in? Can or you text to him and tell him that he can call on his phone? and just have the audio? He's not responding to my calls or, or texts. That's the problem. Well, he seems comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he was eating before. <laughs> uh, all right, um, committee, do you have any questions or comments? Clint, were there any, there was no through on one, right? There was no through on one calls for it at all. Um, anybody else? Ellen or Herman? Well, I'd like to hear a little from him, but since the problem is I have no real question to bring. Uh, okay, so, um, and maybe the audio will connect at this point. I know, okay. And I don't know what you want to do since we can't speak with him, Frank. You just want to go ahead on your own um, or you want to, I don't, I, I don't know, try this again at a different time because I don't know what to say with respect to the fact that we can't speak to him or hear him. Um, so I mean, the only concern here is that even though it's a cheese focused restaurant, it's really not a food a full service restaurant. And it is uh, definitely a grilled cheese restaurant that has sides. And, and yes, it's been open since 2016. You might want to speak to 
why it took until 2019 to get the the beer wine license, Frank. Um, Because I think really it's a question of whether or not we want to uh, approve another license. Do do we want to approve it because he's been there for a while? And do we want to approve it for this type of business? But can you answer the question about the why it, the, the SLA records seem to reflect and the applicant also, or you or the applicant wrote in, somebody on his behalf wrote in that he didn't get his license until July of 2019. How did that happen? Um, give me two seconds, because I'm trying to go through my emails to see if I have another number for him, but I'll be right back oh. to you. So he just turned his video back on. So he like looked, he looked at us for a yeah. minute, but. Yes, and his audio seems to be connected now. Okay. Hello? 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 you Hello? Can you hear us? Alex, can you hear hear us? That's okay. I can't figure out how to get back into the Zoom. Alex, are you there? Yes, we can hear you. The answer answer to the question... um, about why um, there was a delay of when he got the license. Maradona was a problem. The prior licensee had problems with the State Liquor Authority, and it took a while for their attorney to resolve the issues at the State Liquor Authority. So we couldn't get our license until Maradona resolved theirs. So it was so bad that it took two extra years? I mean... Arguably, I know that that was still Maradona's license because he he opened a different business in the location and was the manager, uh, in, and your client was the manager. Um, but even then, it took those additional two years no, to resolve all but, the issues. It wasn't so. I mean, bad. Adisha, when I say additional two years, I mean from the time that we approved it to when I, you actually got the license. I understand what you're talking about, but what I'm what I'm about to tell you is. It's not like the problems were so bad. It was that the attorney elected to try the cases with the authority rather than settle them. And in the process of of trying them, it took longer than anyone anticipated. How'd that go? They paid a fine. They got, the charges were sustained. They weren't major violations. They weren't sales to minors or things like that. They were were garbage basically. So he actually now muted himself. Yeah, it looked like <laughs> the audio, but he muted himself. He connected and then he muted himself. Does he not know how to use this? Is that the problem? Yeah, so, yeah. It looks like it, but that looks he, like the problem. He unmuted himself. I don't know if he, he can hear us. Amik, can you hear us? Oh yeah, I can hear you guys. Oh, <laughs> there we go. He's having a little problem with okay hi good good evening to be here hey Mike, i was just good telling you the problems that maradona i don't know if you heard but the problems that maradona had previously with the sla they were asking why it took so long from when the community board approved it to when you actually got your license and i explained right. that i think it was terry flynn was their lawyer who tried the case with the authority and that's why we couldn't get our license till that was resolved. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe they were found guilty of other violations, but most of their history was uh, like really being some sort of stealth club for minors. That was, that was why it was so awful at least from the community perspective. I think Cheese Grill has definitely turned that place around. We've, you know, we opened through COVID. We've been very responsible. Uh, Everybody, most of the places around us closed, I mean, except for the bars. But food-wise, it's been really hard. Uh, You know, we're now, you know, still in the red, but we're having our guys still work. Uh, We're... You know, we're paying the landlords. I uh, just just keep in, you know, the normalcy of things. So I I think we're far from Maradona days. Definitely, cheese grill is definitely far from the Maradona days. Uh, 
Okay, so then does anybody want to speak to or be heard with respect to whether or not to approve a full license here? No? Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have a huge problem with this, I guess. It's, it is on Allen Street. It's, there's no one above it. It's just licenses, except for the thing that's on the corner at East Tafton right now. Yeah. Um, he hasn't had any issues since he's been open. I, I mean, really, it's just a, a question that I appreciate that it's a business that's been serving food the entire time, but it, that's because it's the way it's constructed, it's pretty shallow. It's a pretty shallow business and it can be, it has a, it still has a takeout, um, takeout offering. Didn't it always have takeout offerings? Because, I mean, it's, it's grilled cheese and it's sides. So it's a limited menu with grilled cheese and sides. Oh, with all uh, the mac and cheese, I think that's our, you know, definitely our signature the dishes. We have five different mac and cheese. I mean, you know, we do cook the pasta. We, there's different types of uh, grilled cheese. We cook most of the, uh, you know, things that we put in. I mean, besides the cheese, we make a lot of the stuff. I mean, the prep time is, uh, is pretty, you know, big. Um, so it's, it's, we have fries. Onion rings. It's not a conventional full service restaurant. And I think that's what I'm struggling with. It is then essentially it's a, it's, it, it's uh, proving the OP for like, it's a very, like I said, a very shallow storefront that has this type of offering. Right. And it would be really reliant just on his history since he's opened this particular business. Right. As opposed to whatever association he has with the other business. Um, so, and that may be sufficient. I'm just raising it for everybody. I, uh, you know, thinking more, the more I think about it, given its location, given where it is, I, I think I would be okay with it. Given his okay. given the location, any... given his history, what we just discussed, I know it is a small space and it's, it is a somewhat limited menu, but I, I think I could be okay with it. Anybody else, Herman or Ellen? Yeah, I'm fine. Or Jesse. I was going to say, or Jesse. <laughs> there you are. They're um, muted, yeah. so I'm trying to encourage them to, to speak. <laughs> I mean, I know where it is. It's just a stone throw away from where I am, and I've seen how we'd operate. Um, I'm not sure what problem adding a liquor license would, would cause, would cause, uh, however, I, I probably wouldn't have a problem with it at this point. Okay. Um, Ellen, do you want to comment? Do you have any questions? I'm fine with this. Okay. All right. So why don't we go to the making a, resol a resolution then? So it'll state the, um, what the application is, what the elements of the application is, what the history of the uh, applicant has been at the location, how many OPs there are, uh, what the history of the applicant is, which is uh, the only, unless there's something else that you want to raise now, the only stated history is the manager and operator of this location. Yes, that's correct. Um, and then it would be where is given that the applicant and, and when the license is actually issued for this location. Um, so it would be where is given that the applicant has operated this business. And I would put that also that the business is operated since 2016 and aware as, uh, um, but the license is issued July 2nd of 2019. Um, given that the operate the Applicant uh, has operated this business um, since 2016, and its location um, 
on a a wide avenue. They should also put a whereas clause about what the street is like. Uh, we would prove this with stipulations governing this method of operation, and then the stipulations would be um, the same as they were previously, so operate a full-service cheese-focused restaurant serving food all hours, hours of 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday, 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 3 a.m. Friday and Saturday, no outdoor space, closing the facade at 11, so... Um, Ellen, I don't know if you can cross that out and add it in to the stipulation that exists. Otherwise, it has to be typed into the bottom because it's different from the standardized one. Playing recorded background music, not having DJs, live music, uh, promoted events, scheduled performances, or events with covers, uh, not applying for an alteration with efforts coming before us, not having happy hours, uh, not hosting pub crawls or party buses, not having unlimited drink specials, not having wait lines and having a staff person responsible for overseeing crowds and noise outside. Does anybody want to um, add anything or change anything? Uh, for the okay. are you referring to the hours of operation or which one? No, I was refer I was referring to the um, the existing stipulation for the facade is to close it at 11, which is different from the standardized facade. So mm -hmm. if you can X out the 10 p.m. and add in 11, where the resolution, where the it's typed out, then you can change it there. Otherwise, it just has to be typed into the bottom with 11 p.m. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? All right. That's all of us. No, Frank, you can't vote. <laughs> Ellen, did you vote? Hi. Okay, thank you. All right, Frank, we'll send it to you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good night. Have a nice um, night, guys. You too. Um, you too. Is there a is there an is there an applicant here for number five? No, not as far as I can see. No one else has joined. I don't see anyone else. So um, for number five, we we actually did a motion to deny last month, and then they withdrew <laughs> and they, and put themselves on the agenda again. So I would just propose the same motion that we voted last month which just outlined what the application was and that they failed to appear to have their application considered. Okay. Yeah. I would okay. second that motion. All right. Uh, all in favor? Yep. Okay. That's all of us. All right. Um, and they'll probably withdraw again. Um, do the three audience members want to say anything or ask any questions? Hello. Mm. Did they go to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Hard to tell when people have their sound off and their it, pictures. Yeah. Off. I guess not. Okay, oh, well, no. then I guess we'll do a, a Laura, adjourn. Laura said no, thank you. Thank you. Joshua Waterman said no, thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Oh, nope. okay. Looks like they're. So you too. Have a good night. So, uh, motion to adjourn. Does anybody have any questions or comments before we move to adjourn? Mm, I don't think so. Nope. Ten before nine. Yeah. yeah. Um, the the oh. only question I'd like to ask is in terms of uh, sidewalk cafe and the present sidewalk use. Um, is it it is? Um, I mean the curb use. Is it? that that's a fait accompli for the future or is, is there a timetable at which the governor or the mayor will pull that back? I, uh, my understanding that it's just during the executive order. Okay. Prohibiting, well, 
outdoor prohibiting indoor dining. Yes. But right? I, I, but not I, the sidewalk I, cafes. If you have a sidewalk cafe, then you could put your yeah. tables it, outside. You just have to uh, minimize them to make sure that you're complying with social distancing requirements. Yeah. If you have an official sidewalk cafe permit, that's different than just people being able to extend their license to the outdoor di outdoor areas. And that's temporary. That is temporary, which I think at the moment, didn't I, it's been extended now through the end of October? I think it has, but it, it what they've said is during the executive order prohibiting or restricting indoor dining. Okay. But, you know, my understanding is... So, I mean, is it's going to be revisited. What it has to be is you can have tables along your facade and you can have tables in the parking lane, but you're not allowed to have tables on the sidewalk along the curb, which is what a lot of places are, they're putting their tables in the parking lane, they're putting side, they're putting tables on the sidewalk along the curb, and then they're putting tables in front of the facade, which then, in most places in the East Village, leaves a you know three or four foot space to walk by on the sidewalk, or less, so, or less. So that's that's where there seems to be some. I don't know if I'd say confusion, but that's where some of the issues seem to be coming. Is with that aspect of it. Nope. But otherwise, yes, yeah. Herman, they're allowed to put it out without having a sidewalk cafe permit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's it for me. That's it? Okay. Okay, well, motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, we all did it. Okay. What? This Have a good night. Bad. Night. Thanks, good everyone. Night. Good night. Take, okay. take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks, people.